Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel. If you have uh, found me by accident, uh, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. I hope that you um, find enough value here that you choose to subscribe. And then, of course, give me a thumbs up and share and comment and all that jazz. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your loyalty and support. It does um, warm the cockles of my heart. Uh, we're closing in on 400 subscribers. And uh, I know that I did say that at, at, uh, when we finally hit the 500 mark, that there would be a significant uh, giveaway. So um, <laughs> I'd appreciate your help getting there. Okay, this is day 80 of the 100 day challenge. And I've been working on this particular project for a while. And I thought, okay, um, I risk being um, covered and uh, killed by uh, cascading craft supplies here on my desk. Uh, I've got several irons in the fire. And it seemed to me that I should do this video even though it may not be complete and may still need something more added to it but at least I can then move on to something else and and clear the decks a bit so basically and again for those of you who have been um, making journals and paper crafting for a while there's probably not going to be a great deal new here um, other than you know my take on on how I on the things I select and how I put things together so somewhere along the way I found these envelopes and they are three six seven and a half by excuse me uh, three six nine ten about oh, ten and a half. And the, the part that I liked about them was this gigantic flap here. Because I thought, oh, that, that lends itself to being a wraparound. So um, what I did, I'll show you sort of the, the project that is nearly complete, or maybe complete. What I did, oh no, do I have it here? Oh, yes, I do, because of course I haven't cleaned up yet. Um, this is that sort of paper tape that you can find in the dollar store or in a drug store that's sort of with the medical tapes. And um, <laughs> not that you need to know this, but I use a couple pieces of this over the snaps, uh, the snap back on my jeans, because of course I get, um, I'm allergic to nickel, so, you know, get an itchy rash. So I usually just rip off a couple of strips and cover that with that, and it can go through the wash, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, so what I did, oh, I had a third one of these. Maybe that one is more. Oh, Okay. And you probably can't see white on white, but basically what I did was reinforce these folds with this tape. Um, it gives them a, a little additional strength. It, um, you know, is obviously thin. It doesn't, it doesn't add any bulk or anything. Now, I have to say that when I was inking um, them in this project, um, it doesn't take the ink quite as well as normal paper does. But anyway, so I have a couple more of these going. And of course, I chose for, you know, for my purposes, um, I think that's about a half inch spine. Oh, you can see there's a little rip there already, just from the handling and the folding. So that should be reinforced, of course. And then, and now I don't know why I did this. I don't think it matters in the in the end, but I don't know why I chose to make this end <laughs> wider than this end. Uh, maybe I thought that, um, you know, it would 
bulk up. Anyway, enough about that. You are quite capable of figuring out your own, obviously using your own envelopes, figuring out your own your own spine width, and um, using the flap if you've got one like this, uh, however you choose. So anyway, let's get to this. Now I will say that the papers that I used um, to decorate this are from the uh, are from Lorna at Tailor Made Journals, and it's called uh, Gilded Grunge, and I absolutely love these papers. They resonate uh, with me, and they're you know I mean obviously it's you know fairly um fairly intensive from a an ink use perspective but to me it, it's it's clearly very much worth it so okay based on that white envelope i showed you what i ended up doing was um making this side uh pocket and sometimes rather than, you know, figuring out where's the center or eyeballing it and missing, I just choose to do the notch somewhere off center. So it's very clear that, oh, she didn't try to center it and miss. Now, um, I just, this is out of, a, this is a book page thing. And I just chose to include it. I guess I shouldn't be putting these things back in because what I really wanted to do is sew in the pages. So I'll just briefly show you what I have. And honestly, I'm sorry, I don't know where this, some of these things came from. Um, I know I keep saying that, but anyway, so this one, it's out of uh, one of those, you know, sort of gift book type things. And it's got quotes on either side, so I didn't bother covering the back of that. This, I it had sort of a distressed look to the edge. I just creased it and, and inked it, and I guess I should do the back a little better. This is a similar book page. It had something here that I wanted to cover, as well as turn it into a journaling spot. So I just used some, this is really thin, kind of almost pathetic paper. But it looks perfect because, of course... Um, grunge is the name of the game here. And this was something, probably a manila tag that looks like avocado dye on there. I'd stamped it with a couple of different things and just inked it up. So there's that. So I made this pocket as well. And again, offset the, the notch. Again, have a few more things here that I kind of really uh, mutilated a bit. And then I thought, well, this is you know, that's kind of a very deep area. So why don't I put in a, a, a shallower pocket? And I did that. And there's that. There's also this pocket here with a notch. Now I haven't, let me just move this over. I haven't um, done anything here. And I probably, well, I don't know if I will or I won't. I put in uh, a copper colored uh, eyelet. And I had this piece of navy seam binding, and I should, I should bring my uh, hair straightener, and just give this a little. Mind you, probably don't want this to be perfectly smooth if everything is, um, if everything else is, kind of, beat up looking. I attached a little key charm. So this is just navy seam binding, and the reason I chose that is because there's a lot of blue in the um the papers so on the flap i used some i don't even know where this paper came from but i had embossed some flowers on it and i just sort of highlighted them a bit with the uh my brush my blending brush um you will see uh images of padlocks i have a padlock collection and uh, a lot of them are rusty and grungy and so on. So I just fussy cut those out of um, some uh, paper that I created out using them. This and this are, these are um, little frames from uh, Tina Chabby Dabby Doodle. And I use that one because of the blue butterfly. Um, so on the, the other side of this cover, again, more of that embossed paper. 
some padlocks that I, or parts of padlocks that I fussy cut. Um, not sure where the clock face came from, but. And then I thought, well, okay, I also have these little uh, gears. So I will be, and I just haven't figured out where yet, I will be adding some of these gears to uh, kind of further grunge it up. But I don't want this video to take forever. So what I'm going to do is show you the papers I've selected and then show you um, the, uh, the sewing in. Um, okay. If you saw my video just a few days ago, I think, on using brown paper and um, distress crayons. Um, oh my God, Karan uh, Karan Dash um, artist crayons. And what the heck was the third thing? Oh, an ink. Then you will have um, seen me create this, and I love it, and the colors work perfectly. So. Instead of hoarding it, I am using it. Imagine that. Um, maybe I should just go ahead and... Maybe I should just sew it in and then I'll show you the pages. That, that works just as well. So basically, oh, I should say that on this, this is a... This is a, a photograph. This is... <laughs> this is a photograph of um, some of my locks. So what I did was I'm turning it into an envelope. And because the inside was um, just white, I spritzed it with coffee water. And this is sort of what happens. So basically, I want to sew this in so that um, while this envelope is still open, so that I can then seal it after the fact. I don't know that I've ever done that, so I'm going to do it today. Okay, so, and you may have seen this, um, mine or, or somebody else's. Most of us have put together some sort of a, a binding kit. So this has some cords in it, some uh, this is upholstery thread. This is, uh, I believe this is, oh, I don't know. I was going to say waxed linen, but that might not be right. In the side pocket, I have some of my needles. And if you've seen some of my earlier videos on book binding, you'll know that I had like only about 300 of these big needles and would spend a heck, way too much time trying to figure out, oh, well, which one has the biggest eye and is not too pointy and blah, blah, blah. So I uh, whittled it down to these few. Um, now, what I intend to use, you may have seen that I have this gigantic spool of twine, string, twine. It's kind of nubby. Um that I got through a thrift haul. So now I just have to be cognizant that the, um, that the eye of the needle is going to be big enough to accommodate that thread. So let me first figure out the, the length. So it's going to be a three hole pamphlet stitch. So we know that roughly the, the rule of thumb is kind of three, um, three times the height of the journal. So one, two, three, and maybe I'll just give a little extra for, cause why not? Okay, so now it should be easier for me to figure out which needle to use here. Now I was just planning to use this po pokey thing. I do have a variety of, of awls and so on. This makes a fairly neat hole, but I'm hoping it's going to be big enough to obviously get this thicker thread through. If I was using something really skinny like this um, crochet cotton, then, you know, you don't need 
a large eye in your needle and nor do you need very large holes. So let's see, maybe this one. I should have probably done this before I... Oh, first attempt, look at that. Okay, let me get these guys out of the way. put that aside okay now because this is a three hole pamphlet stitch and because it's only one signature I'm not going to go to the trouble of making a a template and and doing all that I also want to be sure that this envelope here um, is going to be caught in at least two places and who knows maybe even three so basically, uh, you can see that I've used these oversized paper clips to hold this all together. But maybe what I should do, I have a couple more within reach here, just to make sure that everything stays where it should. I'm going to basically center this stack of papers so that there's the same amount of space top and bottom. Oh, maybe I'll do the opposite side. So roughly a quarter of an inch. And then the same thing over here. And I'll just, I mean, this is, this is a classic uh, Pam at the Paper Outpost move. She always, oops, uh, always takes a ruler and sort of gives it a couple of good wax to make sure that everything is nice and, and right, you know, where it should be. So again, I'm not going to worry too, too much. You know, I just had a thought. I should probably, because this is going to look kind of I'm just thinking that maybe I should run this th but how dirty am I going to get um I'm going to there's some scrap paper is there any paper in the house before I do anything I'm just going to run this over the string and hopefully just sort of color it a bit so that it doesn't look so so white or light when everything else is kind of dark And that is probably good enough for a first attempt. I can, you know, spot darken it later once it's actually sewn in. Um, okay. So basically, um, I've got this all tucked in nice and tight. I typically would eyeball sort of the center and I want to make, I'm not using a book cradle at this point, and I'm not using a phone book or whatever. I'm going to try, oh, why am I using my needle? I want this. So I'm going to kind of eyeball where that is, and I'm going to, as I break through this paper, also kind of make sure that I'm centered. in that spine. Can you see? That may not be perfect, but that's okay. And what I'll probably do, I should maybe make just make sure that's going to accommodate that, the width of that 
string. And let's just bring that little brush back in and do that. Okay, so I've got one hole. Now I said that I want to try to catch this envelope in at least, well, minimum one more place and hopefully two more places. So what I'm going to do here is the same sort of thing. That's, you know what? And look at this. That, I don't, I'm sure that I've glued that down more than once. But you know what it is? It is that tape that I showed you, that medical tape. Once, maybe I should do that right now. Let me put some, I'm just wondering, and yet I'm sure I've used this tape before. I'm just wondering if that tape is sort of, um, I was going to say water resistant. Obviously, this glue does not have water in it, but um, you know, that's probably part of a uh, quality that you want in medical tape, that it sort of is a bit waterproof. Okay, so let's just make sure this hole is big enough. And let's do this a third time. I guess I can. Yeah, I think I'll try to catch that with the third hole. Now, if this were a different sort of project, quite often I use my uh, crocodile to make the holes because then we know they will that it will cut through anything, and it will give a nice um, clean hole that you know will accommodate virtually any sort of um, fiber thread twine, whatever. Okay, so I, I'd say nine and a half times out of 10, I start from the inside as opposed to the outside because I want the twine to be, I mean, I want the, the little tails to be on the inside rather than the outside. I'm just wondering if that if I should reverse myself this time. Hmm. Now this I intend to... Oh no, that will be visible. Or will... Well, anyway, let me do my typical thing and then I'll just... And get on with it. Okay, so oh, <laughs> that takes a bit of effort because, of course, the needle to have a big eye like that, the needle has to be that much thicker. Okay, so I'm leaving a tail about yay, and I don't bother, you know, clipping it or anything. I don't think I've where is that hole? Then I go to the top hole, and again, that's just how I started doing it, and that's how I continued to do it. But there's there's no magic in that. I could easily go to the bottom hole. I'm just wondering if I'm going to have to... Oh, maybe I'll make it. I was going to say I might have to enlarge that hole, but... Okay. 
Then you skip over the middle one. And you go out through the bottom one. And you go out through the bottom one. Why does that not seem to be lining up? And you go out through the bottom. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to have, maybe I should just pull on this a bit now. I know I'm going to have more. That tail is going to be longer than this first one, so I don't I readjust a bit now. Now this uh, string is going to have that nice grungy look to it. Oops, sorry. Um, but it also does not slide very well. Now I suppose, so what I'm doing is going back to the inside from the outside. I just poked my finger. Um, I'm missing that hole though. Now, this hole is going to get a bit bigger because obviously it's got to accommodate that was my finger again. <laughs> it's got to accommodate two thicknesses of this pretty thick thread. So you can see I punctured it there. But what I really want is to try to come up through... Oh, but I don't want to split the thread. Okay, so that's better. I'm coming up through the same hole. So let me pull this through. Now, if you have, and of course, with one signature, it would have been pretty hard to miss the holes. Um... If you had multiple signatures at this point, you would be checking to make sure that they line up in the right set of holes. You don't want this to then automatic to jump to another row and so on. And trust me, that can and does happen. So on the inside, you want to make sure that you've got a string on either side of this center one. Because if you don't, um, you know... Disaster will ensue. So um, I'm just going to end up cutting off a bunch of this, I'm sure. So what I always do is I pull in the opposite direction. That way I get a, a nice, tight, um, nice tight tension. And then you're going to tie off, um, you know, make two maybe even three knots, and basically you, you alternate left over right, right over left. Now that makes quite a big knobby thing there. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. So I will gently remove these big clips so I can show you papers I selected and so I can figure out what's happening with that center envelope. Now at this point it's um, you can uh, let me get a bone folder you can uh, you know just sort of apply a little bit of pressure do a little flattening you know back and front and and some people even do the pages in between just to make sure it kind of sits down nicely now well i guess we'll talk about this when we get there 
Okay, so I've already told you that um, I'm using this brown paper. This is one of my digitals. And, you know, rather than you just cut it down, I think the overall height here was something like maybe seven and a quarter. I just folded it up to create a bit of a pocket. And again, you can see that I, I spritzed it with some coffee water and um, it pulls out colors because these are just inkjet copies. And then I had this black piece of paper. See, I'm getting, I'm trying to get better at using what is right in front of me instead of so let me just explain for a second. This brown black paper was covering the back of a thrifted painting that I bought. So when I was doing the thrift haul video, I started removing the picture hanger and then I tore into the back paper. So I had this piece of black paper sitting around. I'm thinking, Okay, I can either use it right this minute when I when I started doing this, or I can uh, fold it and put it away and promptly forget I ever had it. So trying to get better doing that. And I'm thinking black will be quite dramatic here, you know, depending on how I choose to decorate this page, or it's also one of those pages that a person could use with, say, a white gel pen or a metallic gel pen. This is just um, more of that really thin newsprinty type paper that I had used as a um, kind of a drop cloth, drop sheet here on my desk. Dictionary page. This was kind of a, you know, one of those deals that <laughs> that you get when it, oh, you've got a blocked nozzle on your print head or whatever. And... <laughs> Note to self, if you're printing a lot of pages, it helps to periodically get up and walk over to the printer and see if it's printing properly. Because I can't tell you the number of times I, I printed, you know, 30 pages of something and then realized, oh, halfway through, I start getting these lines. I don't care about that here because more than likely it'll be covered with some decoration. And this is grungy. Same thing, a pocket there. Now this is, believe it or not, let me show it to you this way. This is a photo I've taken of all the this wall <laughs> of heavy duty chain that we have here at the farm. So this is the, like the studs in a shop wall and all these things with these mega mega things of uh, chain. So again, if this has a fold this way and a little pocket this way, and you know. This is one of my uh, gel prints that I love very much and the neutrality with the, you know, the beige and the, and the blue tones I thought worked well. Again, some of that drop cloth or drop sheets kind of stuff. I've already shown you this envelope. So in theory, what I could do here is, uh, oh, I guess that won't work that well since I've caught it here and here. I guess what I'm going to end up doing is gluing these two things. And, you know, then I'll, what I'll, no, no, let me do it right this minute. What I'll do is, how much of this can I fold down? I'm going to fold a a good inch of this down simply because it will reinforce it and it'll give easier whoops easier easier access to the pocket because when you're having to put things in this way as opposed to this way I guess the other thing I could do No, I'll stick with that. I was going to say the other thing I could do is seal this and cut it open here. But that might be kind of cool. Because then it's a much easier access. Hmm. I think that's what I'm going to do. So let me... 
um, trim that nice and short. And of course, I'm going to keep those pieces. So I'll quickly oh, let's glue this guy down. Although I suppose that's less important now. I could have been a little more generous with that glue. Okay, and then we'll glue this down as well. I can't tell you how much I love these locks. I get that. Yeah, I guess that's good enough. It's holding. Okay, so uh, now we have to. Where are my scissors? Just cut a sliver off the edge of this in order to open it up for use. It's not very even, is it? Oh, you know what? I should, let me get, just get in there. I should do a better job with that gluing because now I don't want those to be sticking point, catching points. Could you not have told me that when I thought I was getting away easy? I know it's not your fault. I love that. I may have said it once or twice already, though. Okay. Um, now, I suppose I can reach for my oval punch here. And I think I will do... I'll do fairly shallow. And I will do both thicknesses. to give people the heads up that there's that they have access there too. Yeah, I love that. Cool. Um, more of that. So of course this is the flip side of whatever I showed you before. Again, I didn't do that great a job here when I was tearing, so a little inking up will save the day. This had better be trimmed a bit. Oh, why don't I? Why am I trimming? Why am I not just folding it and inking it and making it grungier? The impulse to have things straight and, and nice and neat instead of do you okay uh, back page of that dictionary page blah 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 I had a heck of a time squaring this thing off and then I thought why am I even bothering this is a this is news brand it's supposed to be rough and tumble 
And then there was a tear in this because, of course, when I was ripping this off the back of that painting, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I was just being Im impetuous. <laughs> so, of course, there was a rip here. So I thought, well, okay, why don't I use some of my salvaged old scotch tape? So that's what I did. Now, I didn't do it on this side, but um, obviously it has been now repaired. And then that is it. Now, I don't think I've created anything yet for this pocket. You saw these things that I intended to use uh, inside the other pockets. So, how are we doing for time? Oh, we're at the 40 minute mark, so I probably should stop there. Um, I won't take your time putting these things back in. I, um, I said I was going to add some gears, so I will. I'll put these things back in. I have to say that I, <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't scare you with this, but I did some pretty ugly... This is last year, the year before, some pretty ugly eco dyeing. But, of course, was I going to waste it? No. So you can see some things that were made like, oh no, this isn't eco. Well, is it eco dyeing? Yeah, I guess. But I also had rusty elements in the, in the bundle. So, and I don't know. I've, I've only tried it once, I guess. So I don't know. Um, obviously, tying, um, so you can see plant material there. There's a washer, a washer, really weakened the paper. So I've got tears, I've got this hole, and again, I guess that's how I bundled it when I threw it in the pot. Um, but again, I'm not about to, to waste this, so I've kept it, but, you know, this was the project to pull some of this out, but of course you can see that it's mainly greens and, you know, blacky gray and then pink and sort of grungy green. So what I did, oh, and I'd also had some ledger paper that had gone through the process. But, again, because I'm trying to use what I have, or what I've just bought, I ended up the other day using a Michaels coupon to buy this three pack of Distress Oxide because I didn't have any of these sprays in any of the colors that I really like, which are blues and purples and so on. So anyway, Faded Jeans, Wilted Violet, and Salty o Ocean. So what I did was I spritzed, oh, I guess it was mainly ledger page. I spritzed some of these scraps here with some of those colors and um, then added water. But I'm not sure why it's that concentrated. Like I, I did it kind of immediately. So, I don't know. Either I should have maybe been holding my spray bottle higher so that the blobs of ink weren't quite so big. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with this, but I think if it would have been a more muted kind of thing, I might have liked it better. So, anyway, I... I have this at my disposal to use with any uh, additional decorating that I plan to, to do in this project. The final thing I'll show you, oh, I have a scrap of that left, another clock, um, more clocks, more padlock bits. Um, is this. Now this was done the same day as the brown paper project with 
So this was acrylic ink on this particular one. So some of these um, bits, and again, this tore in the process, could probably easily work into this project as well. But I'm probably almost at the point where I have enough going on there. So I'm going to stop there. I am going to encourage you to try an envelope project like this if you haven't already done so. Again, if you really like this kit, um, I guess I should also say that I'm not really, I don't really, you know, buy a kit and then use every single thing and um, use it necessarily as the creator intended. So I most of the purchases that I make are for, um, I would almost call them background pages. And I don't mean the light, um, you know, the really faint things that you're intended to journal on but like wallpaper kits and this grunge kit that is, um, again, just a sort of a base layer. So, um, anyway, that's neither here nor there, I guess. But um, anyway, yes, I will uh, post once I, you know, glue down my gears and so on and load up the pockets, I will um, put some photos on Instagram. I thank you very much for joining me. Oh, this is also a, what did I do here? I don't know, but this would work. Look at how those colors work. So I'll probably use that somewhere too. Anyway, I will stop there. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, again, I'm uh, I'm working my way to 500 subscribers. If you can help me get there, I would very much appreciate it. And um, as we get closer, I will be revealing what the giveaway prize will be for hitting that landmark. Um, see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.